Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on flow analysis in Tundis. So, uh, now we will uh, see that how the modeling work is uh, carried out uh, for the flow analysis in Tundis and how uh, you can show the uh, flow behavior you know of uh, the liquid metal inside the Tundis. Uh, because the uh, inlet uh, through the inlet the liquid metal, metal enters and then it is uh, uh, going to uh, all the outlets. So, uh, so once striking uh, first of all it will strike at the tundis bottom and then from there it will move gradually towards uh, the outlet or outlets in the case of multi strand tundis. So, uh, now in that case uh, as we had discussed that uh, the methodology uh, for the flow analysis uh, is that uh, you have to create a geometry uh, you know um, uh, of significance uh, where you want to uh, you in which you want to have the um, uh, you know flow modeling to be carried out. Uh, then you have to uh, select those uh, parameters like uh, what is the inflow rate uh, you know uh, into the tundis and what are the boundary conditions like if you are solving for temperature then what are the conditions you know at the walls what you are going to specify and uh, what are the other parameters like turbulence parameters or uh, maybe uh, other things we have to set like uh, you have to go for uh, the solution control parameters and all that. So, and after that our job is uh, to have the analysis of flow inside the tundis. So, uh, so that is what we had earlier uh, seen that uh, when we sol are solving a problem in that case uh, we first create a geometry then we uh, create the computational mess for the geometry and then set up the CFD simulation and uh, in that uh, we have to set the material properties and boundary conditions. Then we have to solve the equations using the solver and ultimately uh, in the post processing uh, you know uh, stage we have to um, examine the flow uh, field as well as uh, the temperature field and if we are solving for any scalar uh, you know uh, we have to uh, see the scalar transport uh, you know. Uh, also this, that scalar field also you have to uh, check it. So, uh, so first of all uh, as we discussed that we can take one uh, geometry uh, you know um, hypothetically or uh, uh, you know you we can have. So, uh, on this I had uh, done this simulation. So, uh, in that what we see is that this is a uh, typical tundis and uh, as you see that this is the, the inlet and these are mid near middle and far are the outlets. So, this is typically a multi strand tundis you have uh, more than one uh, outlet. So, then we call it as a multi strand outlet multi strand tundis because you have uh, uh, more number of uh, outlet. Uh, we have uh, uh, given this nomenclature near middle and far because it is near to the inlet that is why otherwise it may be taken as outlet 1, outlet 2 and outlet 3 also. As you see that uh, this is the uh, length of the tundis and uh, this is the height of the tundis that is 600 mm all the dimensions are in mm. Suppose then this is 600 mm is the uh, you know uh, height. Uh, and 800 mm is uh, the width and then if you add so it will be 2200 plus so it will be uh, 3 meter 3000 mm is the half length of the tundis and it is the symmetry plane. So, it means symmetry plane means the half of the tundis is 
uh, you do extending towards the uh, left side also. So, uh, your uh, that way uh, your whole uh, tundis length becomes 6 meter. Then um, the outlets are placed as you see it is near to the this wall, uh, it is not in the uh, you know middle. So, had it been placed inside the middle, we could have even taken uh, the one fourth of the tundis for the calculation. Uh, because uh, that way uh, you know that is the symmetry maintained you know. So, in that case you have to make the this geometry. So, for that uh, in normal uh, you know any kind of uh, uh, modeling tool you can create these geometries either by taking these uh, points uh, at uh, you know different positions and then you can uh, you know join them to form edges and then you can have the surface creation and then you create the volume. Similarly, you will have to have these areas you know identified like for the inlet and for the outlets and all that. So, that way uh, we create these uh, geometries uh, in the tundis. So, uh, after we have created the geometry then we have to mesh it. So, uh, you can have a uh, structured mesh or you can have unstructured mesh uh, using the um, you know uh, um, using the computational tool and uh, in the structured uh, you know um, uh, mesh you will have uh, you will be giving certain number of uh, you know uh, mesh in the x direction certain number in y direction and certain number in z direction so accordingly you will have a structured mesh and in that uh, as we have discussed that the um, uh, trait of that mesh is that uh, you can have any particular uh, point or any particular cell. So, they are represented by a particular value of i j and k. So, uh, or else you can have even unstructured mesh. So, for, so for simple geometries you can have a structured mesh. So, if you uh, do the meshing and if you take these number of uh, uh, cells in the x, y and z direction. So, accordingly you can have uh, this kind of uh, you know gridded uh, you know domain. The domain is now uh, filled with the number of grids and it, it shows the uh, you know control volumes which are uh, formed because of the uh, you know uh, the number of messages which have been taken in the three dimensional uh, three dimensions. So, you have a three dimensional geometry now and it has also the uh, grids. So, that way uh, you get this uh, structure. Now, uh, you are going to set up the uh, model and uh, you know before that uh, you may identify the different uh, you know uh, different zones also inside. Uh, so, you can have uh, the identification of inlet uh, outlets then you have the different walls you can set as the walls and also you can have the uh, you know uh, zone also as the continuum or, or where the liquid is there so that you can uh, set it. Now, uh, what you have to do is you have to set up the model and in that uh, if you are going for the heat transfer study also you have to go for uh, the enabling that energy equation. So, you have to solve the energy equation or else you will write the equation of energy and uh, you will uh, be using the uh, standard k epsilon turbulence model. So, uh, you have to uh, you know write those equations if you are solving with your own handwritten code or if you are using any uh, computational code which is uh, uh, freely available uh, or it is available with you then uh, uh, you know uh, you have to select them. Uh, like uh, you can you go for a standard k epsilon turbulence model or you can go for all uh, you know different types of uh, turbulence models which are available like maybe um, RNG and realizable k epsilon and uh, you know other low Reynolds number models, but that depends upon the for simple uh, you know type of flows uh, standard k epsilon turbulence model works uh, better. So, we go for the uh, standard k epsilon turbulence model. Then uh, what we have to do is we have to uh, set up the material properties 
So, uh, as we know that we are uh, going for the uh, steel, so uh, you can have these uh, approximate value of the uh, density specific heat thermal conductivity and viscosity of uh, the uh, steel. So, so accordingly you the, these values may be required uh, you know for uh, solving the uh, equations. Now, uh, when you are uh, going for the uh, boundary conditions, so uh, in that boundary condition uh, you will be having uh, the option to uh, take uh, the values at those uh, boundaries. So, you will have the inlet condition and uh, in the inlet uh, as we you know, if you know the uh, you know uh, casting rate or if you know the uh, you know uh, mass flow rate uh, which is going from the ladle to the tundis. In that case uh, depending upon the you know inlet diameter or inlet dimension, you can have the uh, calculation of the velocity at the inlet. So, that is known as velocity inlet and, and in that case you can calculate the uh, velocity. So, if you know that mass flow rate, so it will be uh, you know rho into A into um, you know V and uh, rho we know for the steel and uh, A is the area of the inlet. So, accordingly you can find uh, the uh, velocity. Then uh, you know turbulence intensity as we have discussed uh, you know we have the expression for the turbulence um, intensity and that is uh, defined in terms of percentage. So, and also it is basically representative of the you know turbulence which is normally 2 percent to 5 percent value is taken and it will be depending upon the fluctuating component you know with respect to the mean component of velocity in turbulence. So, we normally have it 2 percent you can also have the length scale. So, length scale also as we know that it is normally 0 0.07 L or characteristic length of the tundis. So, like that uh, you can have uh, those values. Now, as we know that we have taken uh, the inlet condition as the velocity inlet means we have uh, given that uh, uh, velocity particular velocity at the inlet then you have the outlet condition as the outflow conditions and uh, you know uh, there will be mass balance that we will be maintaining and uh, the inlet temperature if you are solving for the uh, you know temperature. So, in normal case uh, you take that uh, uh, inlet temperature value. So, that is uh, uh, we set some value. So, maybe if you have a uh, metal uh, which is entering into the tundis of 1600 degree centigrade. So, you can take the uh, you know inlet uh, temperature. Now, uh, as you know that uh, you have the Mm, heat flux uh, that needs to be provided. Now, uh, the thermal conditions include uh, the um, uh, you know con the boundary conditions at the walls because from the walls the heat is being dissipated and also from the top surface the heat is being dissipated. So, from the top surface it will be going you know uh, to the atmosphere and from the walls also there will be we have discussed that there will be different way by which the heat will flow through the walls and then it will go to the surroundings. So, uh, for a simple case you can have the uh, you know heat flux from the free surface uh, at the bottom wall uh, at the long wall and at the short wall of the tundis you can have those uh, you know long wall means along the length and then short walls are on the sides. So, from there you can have these uh, you know uh, heat flux values that you can take uh, and uh, that will be required to uh, study the temperature distribution how the temperature changes. Now, uh, when we are uh, so as we discussed that uh, we are uh, um, you know applying the uh, boundary conditions and uh, normally on the walls we apply the no slip boundary conditions and uh, we also use the standard um, you know log law wall function in the case of uh, you know standard k epsilon turbulence model. 
So, in the standard k epsilon turbulence model, you have to also be um, uh, you know careful that uh, the, um, the first grid where it should be placed because uh, we are not taking the role load and Reynolds number values uh, you know uh, load and Reynolds number flow. So, we are taking that to be a turbulent uh, in the turbulent region. So, you will have to have the first grid in that zone you know so that that care has to be uh, taken. So, and then in the thermal conditions you may have the different options and you can take these heat flux condition as we have taken in this case. Uh, now, uh, when we talk about the wall boundary conditions then many a times uh, we can take the low Reynolds number models also because they uh, you know in the vicinity of the wall. Uh, they take the, um, uh, the the condition uh, the, the flow to be uh, laminar you know and uh, in that case you will have the more number of grids near the wall and uh, that's why uh, you know they sometimes uh, take larger time they, they take larger time because once the come number of grids will be more in that case the time requirement will be more so so that way your uh, these uh, wall boundary conditions are to be uh, provided uh, you know with uh, proper understanding that what kind of uh, model you are taking and uh, how you know that will be helpful in, in true manner the flow which is uh, uh, you know occurring inside the uh, domain. So, uh, so that is about the uh, wall uh, boundary conditions. Now, once you have uh, set the all these boundary conditions like uh, inflow, outflow, wall boundary conditions. Then you have the thermal boundary condition that may be given you know in terms of uh, uh, the heat flux value or maybe you can provide a specific temperature also. So, that will the way it will calculate the heat flux value in this case the it calculates the temperature value. So, accordingly you know these uh, values can be given and then uh, uh, now uh, now, before we uh, start the solution, so we have to set the uh, solution parameters. Uh, so, before that uh, how we are going to you know uh, take the pressure term uh, you know into account. So, for that uh, you know we, there are uh, different uh, algorithms and then you we use the uh, semi implicit uh, you know uh, uh, based algorithm pressure linked equation. So, uh, so that is used. So you have, you have simple, simple. You have simple. You have P. So different type of algorithms are there. So you know pressure is very important term. That uh, minus dou P by dou X or dou P by dou Y. That term is coming. So we need to you know uh, model that also. So for that you have these uh, different algorithms and normally simple we uh, take. So you can have the from the drop down list if you are using one uh, you know uh, code. And then also there also you have to uh, define that how you are uh, going to discretize uh, take the discretization uh, methods maybe uh, for the momentum for dissipation rate for kinetic energy for energy. So, normally uh, we can take first order or second order upwind uh, you know discretization schemes uh, for them uh, we had a certain idea in our earlier lectures. Then uh, we are also taking the residuals because uh, you know uh, the residuals they so they show, you know when you have to stop the uh, you know uh, uh, solution. So, basically that will be only when you feel that the steady state is reached when the there is change in value which is less than certain uh, you know set parameter set value. So, because uh, you know in that case when there will be no change and you are setting that there is a change is less than certain value then you are stopping. So, we are changing giving certain values in standard you know codes and then we get uh, set these value and you can have uh, uh, you know 10 minus 3 to 10 power minus 6 uh, for these uh, you know uh, uh, parameters. Then uh, finally, we do the initialization uh, for the starting of the solution and then we start. So, normally we initialize from the inlet values and uh, you know values are initially provided and then we do the iteration and that iteration goes on 
And when we are doing the unsteady analysis or, or steady analysis in that case time is not involved. So, we give the that for how many iterations you have to start, uh, we have to run the program so that you get the uh, proper flow field. So, uh, if you uh, run uh, then uh, you get this this way the residual plots. So, as you see we have uh, set the uh, residual plots and, and this way it will come and after that after some time, uh, certain time if the residual conditions are met as you see for continuity for x velocity y velocity z velocity uh, energy turbulent kinetic energy uh, epsilon is the rate of dissipation of turbulent kinetic energy and then you have if you are solving for even for the tracer or scalar uh, quantity in that case that is also solved. So, that way on the monitor you can have the uh, visual display and then you ensure that uh, the, uh, the solution is complete. So, you know, once you do that uh, you know in that during that process if the geometry is simple it may take less time, but then in most of the cases it will take a large amount of time maybe sometimes the convergence rate is very small or it, it is uh, you know showing abnormal behavior. So, we have to choose the relaxation parameters also under relaxation parameters uh, in, in that case uh, that we will basically changing that how much uh, you know uh, taking you are you know how much in what way you are going to incorporate those changes for getting a proper meaningful result from the earlier you know iteration value and to the next iteration. So, that way uh, you know these uh, relaxation uh, parameters are being used. So, that way this ensures that equation is uh, uh, properly solved and converged. So, uh, then uh, once you ensure that it is uh, completely uh, you know you are getting a converged solution then you go to uh, get the results you can have a the uh, temperature contours uh, as you see and although it is showing 1.87 only uh, 1870 which is basically the uh, the inlet temperature, but if you take the range then it will show or it tells that uh, at here the temperature is maximum and then uh, you see that on the walls uh, how it is slowly varying and here it is uh, minimum temperature on these corners and it is uh, decreasing uh, as you see on the uh, top surface and on all the walls you can have the uh, uh, temperature contours uh, that will give you the idea that how the temperature is uh, changing you know uh, um, all across the uh, you know domain. Uh, then uh, the more important is to know the uh, flow behavior of uh, the, um, uh, the steel inside the tundis. So, as you see these, uh, these are the velocity contours at the um, inlet plane and uh, this is uh, uh, the velocity if you look at the inlet plane as you see this is the inlet vertical plane. So, as you see that you have uh, uh, um, the uh, flow which is uh, coming on the uh, coming in the bottom direction and then it is uh, moving from here. So, that way uh, and it is moving through, through here and then so basically it is a, a convective contour is shown. So, um, uh, but then uh, this way it is coming and then it is going inside you know through that uh, domain. So, velocity is high and although it is uh, less on this side. Now, if you uh, take that uh, outlet plane, so what you see that the metal uh, you know now from here as you see this is uh, toward the uh, you know uh, near the inlet and once it has come then the liquid uh, metal has the tendency to move up. So, this way it is moving and they are coming and going passing through the outlet. So, this is how you know you can have the yes, you can see the uh, velocity of the uh, liquid steel at, at these uh, different uh, you know locations and uh, uh, the velocity contours can be uh, seen. Uh, maybe we can see also later that there may be you know a kind of uh, uh, you know loops also you can find when you uh, use the flow modifier. So, that time it is uh, more visible. But uh, this is how uh, you, you can see 
uh, you know that uh, there will be uh, flow and uh, as you see that the, the, uh, the liquid is uh, passing through this at a very high velocity here because being near to the inlet it will be passing and then as the uh, you know it is moving uh, away from the inlet. So, certainly the uh, velocity at which it will be approaching that will be certainly changing because as you move away from the uh, inlet in that case the um, you know uh, velocity will be changing. So, that is at the outlet plane. You can have also uh, the uh, you know velocity at the uh, bottom plane. So, as you see the plan view the liquid metal has uh, uh, you know st uh, stuck the uh, turn this bottom and then it is uh, spreading in all the directions. So, we having a very high velocity there. So, it is uh, moving and then as you see that it is uh, you know uh, uh, slowly the velocity will be changing it will be the surface you know. Uh, so, it will be going from here it is you have the first uh, you know. Uh, so, uh, you see that considerably large velocity is coming and then you will have the metal coming through all these uh, outlets. So, the velocity can be uh, computed you can see that where the velocity is high where the velocity is low. So, these ideas can be um, obtained from these uh, you know velocity vectors that can be drawn. So, the idea is that uh, you know uh, you can very well see the uh, velocity vector uh, you know and you can uh, draw the uh, uh, thermal contours you can also draw the uh, contours for the turbulence uh, turbulent kinetic energy which will be indicative of the uh, value of these parameters turbulent kinetic energy where it is higher so where you are, where you have given the velocity higher you like you will, you will see that your um, that values will be uh, more so accordingly because uh, and uh, then uh, you know from these uh, velocities you can have the idea also that uh, what are those regions where the velocity is very very small. Normally, if the velocity is very very small in certain region uh, that may be a probable uh, reason for the uh, dead region for the dead space because uh, uh, the liquid uh, may not uh, the liquid which is coming continuously that may not go into that zone. And so, that uh, may be uh, the ineffective utilization of the Tundis volume. So, this can be you know seen from these uh, velocity vector values. Now, uh, where we can see also that when we use the uh, you know flow modifiers in that case these velocity vectors change. So, what happens that uh, as we have seen that when we uh, start the uh, you know solution or when we start uh, looking at the velocity vector at the bottom wall or even at the outlet wall we see that near the outlet it is uh, uh, quickly entering. So, that is known as short circuiting also many a times. So, uh, if the liquid metal will directly go into that then the height the high temperature still will not go into other zones and in that case other zones may experience a smaller temperature. So, many a times what we do is we are to alter the flow modifier I mean flow configuration inside we use the flow modifiers. Now, these flow modifiers may be in the shape of a dam which is uh, placed on the uh, bottom wall uh, you know which is uh, um, you know it is one position is at the bottom wall at the bottom uh, you know at, at, at z equal to 0 and it will have certain height suppose in this case it has a height of 225 mm. So, we may have the a placement of dam just to ensure that the liquid metal which will be striking then after that it will be deflected and it will go inside and then it will have a loop. So, it will uh, go into other zones and the high temperature still which is coming it will be making all the zones you know uh, also active. So, for that we use the uh, you know uh, dams. We also use many a times the wares. So, wares are basically used from here. So, we, we use uh, from the top and at, at certain uh, you know of certain heights. So, that way we can also use uh, the, the wares in, in these cases 
and then we also use the baffles. Baffles will have uh, the uh, you know uh, limited uh, you know uh, outlet uh, area in that whole domain. So through that the metal will pass. So so dams, wears, baffles, and even the advanced pouring boxes are nowadays designed with the boxes are near I mean on the bottom wall and in uh, just below the inlet. So, they are there to see that what is the, their change on the flow uh, alteration. So, this is a bare turn this turn this with dam and turn this with baffle. So, if you uh, take the velocity vector they you will see that there will be changes in the velocity vector you will have as you see that being the bare uh, turn this you will have such kind of velocity vector whereas, if you use the dam in that case the metal goes up and then you can see that the higher velocity is seen on this side. So, you will have higher velocity as well as if you use the baffles you can see that it, it is how these are uh, uh, altering. So, basically uh, it will be uh, uh, you know altering the flow pattern and then the. Um, so, they may have there may be different you know uh, uh, purposes uh, for which the tundis is used many a times we need you know that it should mix thoroughly many a times we need a quiescent flow, quiet flow or so. So, depending uh, upon the situation we can use uh, these uh, different uh, you know uh, uh, flow uh, configurations. If you look at the outlet uh, plane you know uh, velocity vector also there we see that we see there are considerable changes in the uh, you know velocity vector which we see uh, you know uh, in in this case you have uh, the uh, you know this way the flow is going the top surface directed whereas, in this case it is bottom surface directed flow is there. So, accordingly you can uh, have the feel of the change in the uh, you know uh, flow uh, configuration you can also see the velocity vector at the bottom wall. So, as you see that in the case of bare tundis it is going like this, but in the bottom wall you are uh, you know at the bottom you see the higher velocities up to this zone, whereas in this case you see that this ve high velocity zone is confined here because after that it is uh, facing a um, uh, dam. So, it is going up. So, velocity is increasing in the upper planes not at the bottom wall. So, as is uh, seen in the case of dam and uh, baffle also. So, this is about typically about uh, knowing the uh, fluid flow behavior you know uh, in a uh, tundis and uh, if you do that uh, you know this is uh, used even to uh, find the um, you know different zones inside the tundis like dead um, zone uh, you know plug zone or mixed zone or so. So, that we will see in our coming lectures that how we compute these mixing parameters and different tundis volumes inside the uh, Tundis. Thank you very much.